this whole week here on confession, you know, does produce, confessing does produce godly finances. And we actually give you some principles and some teaching about how to really get uh, production of your confession. Bear with me as I say this night, and, and this is a, and we end at the end of this month, and we go to a different level in the month of July. But I don't want to share about tonight, um, but what's our mouth? Our mouth, our, our mouth, what's our mouth? Our mouth is a, one of the most important um, components in the human body. Your mouth uh, release, it release your thoughts, release your way, your thinking, it release your attitude. Your mouth is what it is, can make you or break you. Your mouth can save you, it is destroy. Your mouth is very effective. Your mouth will help you focus right, and, and your, whole, your mouth will help you change, and it will help you add things to your life. Your, your mouth can get you into something and it's good or bad, and bring you out, you know? And it, it, it can guide you, your mouth can, can, your mouth can give you the opportunity to, 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 to be forgiven by God, to, to receive from God. Your mouth is very important. You know, not just your physical mouth. I mean, what your mouth contains, what it produces. And confession, you got to use your mouth. There is no way you can confess and don't use your mouth. Your mouth is very important. And I said again before, there are words that open doors for you and words can close doors. I have learned that down through the years. There are things you can say that a door can never open again. You know, a person will hate you innocently. There are people who don't like me innocently, innocently, just don't like me. And they're nothing good. They just, they just don't like me. They just don't like me innocently. And I haven't done nothing wrong. But they don't like me. So and they say things about me that, that, that now they realize is not true. You know? Our mouth has liberty. Your mouth has liberty. Liberty. Liberty to say what is in our character and our attitude. Your mouth represents your character and your attitude. If you don't say nothing, I cannot, uh, I cannot identify your words with your attitude. If you stay quiet, I, I can't read you. You know, I can read you, but I might have static. If you stay quiet, but your mouth release the opportunity for I to really uh, distinguish your character and your attitude. So your mouth is very important in this work. I'm talking to you today. I want to sit down and let you understand because there's a crossover taking place. I get, get a post today from one of the guys and, and the post is saying, they see that uh, famine is coming to the country, famine. But I, I have said this since 2020. I, uh, I listen to people forget what I said. So your mouth can say things and people forget what you say. And you have to re reiterate it again for you to become familiar. But I have said all oh, what happened right now with the Bitcoins and the and the uh, and the, the, the jab and the COVID and the pandemic and the, the mass and I have said all these things from 2020 January. I've said so much things in my mouth. You have to go back and watch those things. You know? That's why those things are very effective. I've said things that haven't come to pass yet. What I use, my brain, no, my mouth. So your mouth is very, very effective. It's one of the most effective part on your body. Our mouth has liberty. You can see what you want. You can offend people, you can bless people. You know? Every mouth can be ruled and command itself. Every mouth. Your mouth can rule you. Can rule you. They can say things and then sorry. I try my best not to say things and then sorry. I try my best, you know. I to say some things with the intention to say sorry. 
So I, I, I will ask you quiet. You must say, I don't want to say sorry. And I, I like when they say something wrong, I acknowledge it and say, okay, it's my fault. I'm wrong. Same mouth I used to say it, I have to fix it with my mouth. So your mouth can be ruled and command itself. <laughs> and you cannot confess in your brain or in your thoughts alone. Your confession is incomplete without the usage of your, our mouth. Our confession is incomplete without the usage of our mouth. You see, focus on issues has a lot to do with watching our mouth. So, you cannot focus on issues with your mouth. You focus with your spirit or your, your soul or your intelligence. That is what you use to focus. And your mouth now manifests your focus. So focus on issues has a lot to do with watching what you say. You can't lie in your mind. You cannot lie, you cannot lie in the mind. If you lie in your mind, you lie to yourself. Your words from our mouth can change our life for the better or for the worse. So confession now, you can confess and bring damnation to yourself. You can confess and end up making enemies. You can confess and get forgiven. You can confess and get rich. You can confess and get healthy. You can confess and win. You can confess and produce God. You can use your mouth and confess, you know, and bring success. Your words from your, our mouth can change our life. My life has been changed by my mouth and my thoughts. That's why some folks reach 40, 50 in life and have nothing. There are folks reach 50 years, 60 years, and have nothing to show. And will try to teach you, a young person, how to make it in life. If a brother have not produced that I shared last night on results, if there is no results in your life, and I, I'm a young person trying to find my goal, how can you impress me when your life is a failure and your results is not transparent? And if you do see it, it's not a good example. Some of us, we live our life, have good jobs and, and just, just have our own opinion and our own, in our own way. And, and we start from 25 years, now we 50, 51, 53, 55, 60, and we have no results. And we want to tell people how to make it in life. Not, not, not with a dude like me. I have to see results. I have to hear results. I have to see results. That's what makes me successful. What makes me successful is successful others. Let me say again. What makes me successful is hanging around successful others. If you end successful, I have a problem with that. If you if you have not have no good results. I have problem with obeying you or following you or doing what you say. You are a failure and your words cannot help you produce. I'm just talking tonight. I'm just talking this, this whole time I'm talking. I'm not, I'm not going to preach to you because somebody won't preach it. But you need to be edified, empowered. 
this crossover this week is empowerment. I empower you to be stable, even though you're, 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 you make a mistake, you sin, you fall, you get back up. You know, you have issues in life, you, you're right back up. So I am not preaching to you, I'm trying to edify you to the crossover become simple. And I said, talking to you face to face. I'm far back on the stage. I'm talking to you face to face. Your words from our mouth can change our life for the better or for the worse. God's word, this is one, can correct any one mouth for the better. God will not correct your words for the worse. God don't do wicked things. God, God not evil. God not wicked. God don't spite people. He allows you to get spite. God not, God not what we think God is. But God's word can correct any one mouth for the better. Because for God to correct your word for the better, your word has to be worse. Yeah, you would have to be out of out of alliance, out of out of the plumb of God. Uh, it done bad already, so God can make your word your know, from your mouth worse. If you have it worse already, you can make it better. So you could use His word to change your words from your mouth. That what God did to me. I don't know about you, but that what God did to me. I was badly off. One of the most powerful texts in the scripture about the about is James chapter 7. James chapter 3, verse 7. In James chapter 3, verse 7, one of the most some powerful texts. Look what James says in, in, in chapter 3, verse 7. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpent and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. Man can tame any species. You can even tame a fish. <laughs> James said every beast, every beast, a lion, a tiger, a morocco, a bird can be in your shoulder here. Man can tame any, James make it specific. He called the reptiles and the birds and animals and everything. He says, man can tame that. James chapter 3, verse 7. Man can tame anything he wants to tame. Verse, you know, say, you know, for every kind of beast and of bird and of serpent and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. Was it? But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Let me just point out. I I I try my best not to have a, a poison tongue, <laughs> and I pray you don't have one night. But James categorized all human beings. You say nobody can tame the tongue. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly and evil. Full of deadly poison. You know what a poison tongue is? And hey, when you are wrong, a person with a poison tongue is a killer in it. They will kill your love, they will kill your worship, they will kill your praise. You will kill your marriage. You will kill your life. You will kill your finance. You will kill your hope. You will kill your faith. Whatever you do, try to avoid people who tongue is full of poison. I don't like to be around a poisonous tongue. A poisonous tongue is a, da a dangerous tongue. I wish, I wish she fall. I wish she dead. I wish she gets sick. I wish they never get it. I wish they, they lost the house. I wish, I wish. James say, you're talking here, but they cross over. You cannot cross over into godly finance 
with an unruly and evil tongue full of deadly poison. And we cannot serve God like that. You cannot serve God. I can never serve God and have a poisonous tongue. I cannot, I cannot celebrate when people get wounded or hurt. I, I cannot, I cannot feel good. I can't feel excited when she falls or he falls. I, I cannot go. I can't just clap my hand and say, hey, I cannot smile when one is going down the road in disaster. If you can do that. Your tongue is full of deadly poison. James said that. Not me. Hello. Not me said that. James. I just quoted James. So don't hold against me. Say, Pastor, say, I didn't say your tongue had poison. James said that. But the tongue can no man take. It's unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. We cannot use confession and have a poisonous tongue. Or oh, your tongue is deadly. You know, most time a, a person is envious. The tongue represents envy. You know, your tongue can represent envy. Also, love. Your tongue can represent love. And that love will never change. Because, you know, why? Right? Your tongue mustn't change. Like, for heavy, I love my wife, I love my children. I love my car, I love, I love God. That that love will never change. But I want to do what they say. You know, that love cannot change. My tongue have that love so constructed that I could cross over into any realm with God and carry the love for mankind, for my family. There is no way I could live and not be a family man. I'm a family man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a family man, but I'm a stern man. I'm a firm man in the family. And they might like my firmness, but that is what makes me cross over. Because I just cannot compromise with my tongue. <laughs> hey, man, that don't compromise with your tongue. So James verse 9 says, they are with, you know, look, look, look over it. They are with blessed to be God. The tongue, the tongue so effective, it can bless God. God, I love you. Oh, I will serve you, God. I will never leave you, God. You know God. You're a good God. You are most, Lord, you're full of mercy. Lord, you're full of favor. Lord, your, your grace is sufficient. And I love the grace of God upon me. And, and God love. And, and we can use our mouth and put God where he can't even be. Be on himself. You can make God rise above everything. That tongue have the ability to put God first and be on him. Ah, uh, you can just say, you know, there with bless me, God. That tongue, you cannot bless God on the inside unless it, it comes on the outside with your words. And there are folks they have the qualified. You can bless God very well. That folks when they hear bless God, they show they show that person any with God. But when it when when when, when tough come, when the tough time comes. They might cross, they might go back over. Now people say, I love God, love God, love God. And all this, get, get that person rich now. They love God, they get $10 million. <laughs> they say, God, see you. <laughs> they will bless me, God. Even the Father. So you can bless God, James says, and bless the Father. And there with me, curse we men, same tongue that bless God, have the ability to wish Pastor Carl this, and to wish his wife this, his grandchildren this, his daughter this, his son that. The same tongue that bless God will wish my granddaughter dead, or my granddaughter leave the church, or, or she fall, or she, she mess up, or, or she sin, or, same tongue, you know. Bless God. They will bless with God, verse 9. Even the Father. And they will be cursed with men, which are made after the similitude of God. 
the word similitude there, that means we have God image. Every human being have a God center image. We are similar. But the, what makes us different from God and what God make man to be in his image is our tongue. Our tongue can make us move from God. Our tongue can make us stay with God. My tongue make me stay with God. Even my body and want to stay with God. My tongue just say, I stay. <laughs> But body say no, go, go. But he say no, leave him, leave her, leave them. For the church, go, go back and smoke junk. The body say I feel for sex, I feel for drinking. People look up, I feel for cocaine. Uh, but Tom say no, body, no, no. So my tongue could have the liberty to make me stay with God while my flesh crying out. <laughs> They will bless with God, even the Father, and they will be cursed with men, where, which are made after the similitude of God. Verse 10. Out of the same mouth, look at what he said, proceed blessing and cursing. These things are not to be so be. If I have to curse you, the word curse, it didn't mean obscene language, eh? the word curse. It means to release damnation upon you. To release to re the word curse did not mean obstinate as well. It's damnation, you know, deception, you know, wrong wishes. The, the word curse is to carry an evil connotation. Curse. Same mouth. On the same mouth, proceed blessing and cursing. These things are not to be so, James says. You cannot cross over into godly finances and have cursing and blessing in your same mouth. We're talking here about crossing over, over down December, January next year, 2023-24. This teaching is for next year, you know. This teaching is not for next week, you know. It's for next year. 24, 25, this teacher prepare you for that down the road. When the famine begins to surface and you can't get bread, don't come and curse God. Confession is saying what God says. So confessing does produce godly finance if you know how to watch your mouth. That is why I have reached so far going in 40 years. Because I've watched my mouth. Even though I'm going wrong, I watch my mouth. I never use my mouth to destroy no one since I'm saved. I don't know how. Somebody had to teach me that. I never use my mouth to curse nobody. I never glorify and feel good when she fall, he fall, them fall, them get divorced. I never, I never reject the opportunity to bless someone. That is when you hear you know out of the mouth to have the same blessing and cursing. Because if I have to, if I was, if I have cursing, I would have manifested years ago. People say I do it, but God say, well done, God. We stand out of the same mouth perceive blessing and cursing. These things are not to be so. We're talking about the cross over into godly finances. You have to watch your mouth. Watch what you're saying with people, you know. It's better to always talk a bad person good than to talk a bad person bad. Let me say it again. I know some of you didn't get that. It is better to talk a bad person good and to talk a bad person bad. I have myself. It is better to talk about a bad person good and to talk a bad person bad. Verse 11, James chapter 3, verse 11. Does a fountain send forth at the same place 
sweet water and bitter water. All right, the word water here, the word water here, it is mean life. The word water, James said, can your tongue speak bitter and give life? Or speak sweet and give life? The word bitter, it means cursing. And the word sweet, it means blessing. And we who are children of God must know we cannot use our mouth to, to give life to this one and to give death to this one. If you're a Christian, right, to have God, and you, there are a person to call your phone, and your sister, brother, you know, and you ever want to take the call because they offend you or you offend them and everything, that is being bitter. I could never not take a believer call. I don't care who he is, or who she is. Once you are a child of God and you call my phone, even though you offend me, I'll answer it, hello. Yes. Because if I don't answer that person call, that means I cannot answer God's call. Because that person could be calling me to apologize or to make up. But because I am bitter, it does not make me better. Hey, being bitter does not make you better. So if we had to cross over and use confession, you got to watch your mouth. And that is what I'm doing right now for the past 38 years. Never talk to nobody dumb. No. God bless you. Call me here and see you in the morning. Much love.